Section 11.4, and we're going to be talking about limits now where x approaches infinity. So in all the problems you're going to be doing, x is going to be approaching infinity. There are three different things that can happen when you're looking at this type of limit, and it all has to do with where the highest power of x is at. And so you want to look at your entire function, locate where the highest power of x is, and then you're going to um, decide what happens to the limit from there. So in the first one, our highest power of x is actually in the bottom. This x has a power of 1, and so the bottom kind of outranks it in that sense. And so what we want to think about is if we were going to put in very large numbers here, you know, if we put in 100, and we multiplied it by negative 2, and then we added 3, what kind of number would we get? And then we would get a negative number, and this can be pretty small, like negative 200. And then if I put that same number down here, 100, but I square it this time, times it by 3 and add 1, this is an even bigger number on the bottom. So no matter what I put in the top, well actually whatever I put in for x, the top does not grow as fast as the bottom. The bottom is growing way faster than the top. So no matter what number I put in, I'm going to end up squaring it, making it very, very large, which overall makes a fraction very, very small. So the bigger the denominator gets, the smaller your fraction actually is. And so the larger numbers we keep plugging in, trying to get out to infinity, pretty soon we plug in a million, and we're squaring it, and so it's getting so large on the bottom that it actually comes out to be zero. So when the highest power is on the bottom, your limit is zero. Next you have actually equal powers, so this time we have x squared on both top and bottom. So as I start to plug in bigger and bigger numbers, let's just say I plug in a thousand and I square it, I'm also plugging in a thousand here and squaring it. And so they're kind of actually keeping pace with each other. They're canceling each other out. And when you have a million dollars and you square it, three more dollars doesn't really matter to you a whole lot. So actually, this three and this one don't really even contribute to the overall problem. So since this x squared and this x squared kind of cancel each other out, what you're really focused on is just what's in front of them, their coefficients. So when the powers match, on top and bottom, then you look at their coefficients, and in this case it's negative two-thirds, and that's what the limit will be, is negative two-thirds. Again, when you have a kind of a plus on the end, or even a minus on the end, those numbers become so insignificant compared to infinity that we don't really even need to bother with them. The last case is when the highest power is on the top. Um, when the highest power is in the numerator. And so no matter what I'm plugging in here, if it's a thousand, I cube it, I'm getting a very large number, and the bottom just can't keep up. Even though you're squaring it, it's not going to keep pace with what's happening on the top. Again, the three and the one aren't doing anything for me, and since the top is getting larger and larger and larger, the bottom can't keep up. Although it will cancel a little bit, the top is always going to be bigger. And so the larger, larger numbers you put in, it's going to travel its way to either positive infinity or negative infinity. In our case, it happens to be negative, because no matter what number I plug in for x, I'm going to multiply by negative 2. So if I plug in 100 and then cube it, once I multiply by negative 2, I actually end up with negative infinity this time. So you need to watch the coefficient. It isn't just going to be infinity. It could be negative, just depending on what's happening. So we'll do a couple of examples to see it again. Still approaching infinity, make sure that you pay attention to this right away when you're doing problems for your homework or the test. And so we want to look at each one of these. This can actually be written as the limit as x approaches infinity of 4, and then minus the limit as x approaches infinity of 3 over x squared. And so we can kind of treat these as two separate problems. This one, there's nothing to plug into, so no matter how big x gets, it doesn't really matter. It's just going to be 4. This one, the highest power is on the bottom. And by what we just learned up above, highest power on the bottom gives us a 0. And so this is 4 minus 0. Next up, looking at the fraction as a whole, um, I could break it up like this one. This x cubed on the bottom would need to go to each of these, and so you'd end up with two separate fractions. I could just deal with it as one fraction as well, just looking at where the highest power is. And for us, the highest power is on the bottom, which means that this limit is going to 0. Next up, make sure that you scan the entire function looking for the highest power. The highest power on top is this guy. Highest power on the bottom is this one. So those are the two you're comparing. Um, no matter where they're located in the function, you're just looking for the things that have the highest power. And we're approaching infinity. 
and if the top is getting incredibly large, way larger than the bottom, and I happen to have a negative in front, no matter what I plug in here will turn out to be negative. So this one will be approaching negative infinity. And so that's how you do limits with infinity. The only thing you need to watch is kind of what you're approaching and then how it gets plugged in. So if you were to plug in 100 and cube it and give it a negative, you're going to end up with negative numbers. Um, back here, we just separated into two different limits and kind of evaluated them separately.